crazy that the road even exists in some places. <laughs> One minute you'll be on a four lane paved highway, the next minute you're on the edge of a cliff on a single lane dirt track with semis and excavators. Despite the hundreds of acres of land, either agriculture or free, there's no camping. <laughs> the whole route was just really unexpected. The amount of waterfalls, the amount of crazy terrain. We were forced to ask, ask people if we could camp on their property. <laughs> the campsites that we did end up finding, <laughs> it was about as unexpected as it gets. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, Give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No. For something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners. Proudly presented by West Can Overland, off-road and design. The main reason we took Route 60 over other perhaps faster and more optimal routes can be answered quite simply. It sounded fun. We have this thirst for the unknown. some peaches guys. I didn't think I'd find peaches in it. No, I was not <laughs> expecting <laughs> Colombian peaches. They look nice. They look really good. Although there's not much left of any of the planet to be pioneered, we love taking roads less traveled. There were no posts about this route on iOverlander, which is uncommon, and that sparked curiosity. How long do they just bring them down the road? Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, that guy's big. Holy, don't hit the truck. <laughs> then we referred to our maps and confirmed the route had hundreds of sharp turns, a few mountain passes, and was sure to be full of surprises. We drive roads like this because we're constantly looking for the surprise factor. We don't want everything to be easy, which sounds strange. We want it to be memorable. These seemingly random dirt roads often tell the best stories. And that's what we're all about. Well, she was very nice and very talkative. And we got treats. I like treats. Don't ask me what they are. Yeah, that's the real uh, Rio Negro. We're thinking it's from all the coal mining. So this is our chance to show you the unexpected sights and happenings along Route 60. And as fate would have it, they started pretty much right away. Oh. Well, we have to wait till 5.30, so here we are. <laughs> One hour later. Route 60 is an 855 kilometer long national road traveling east to west. It is technically one of Colombia's most important routes, connecting two of the largest cities, Bogota and Medellin. We're entering just northwest of Bogota and will travel roughly two-thirds of its abstract characteristics. Excuse me, sir, you can't park there. Oh, but he did. He most certainly did. Sometimes when you're overlanding, <laughs> it's just impossible to make a plan. It took us like nine hours to get we woke 200 kilometers today. 151. We woke up this morning and we're like, we're gonna go drive to this waterfall. Said it was about four hours away. We would assume that would take us like maybe five to six. Road Which is slow, everyone. Five it is six slow. Hours five to six hours to go 151 kilometers. But like the roads are insane. They're super bumpy. There was also construction and roadblocks. And what else? There was, a, there was some other random stuff. Oh, well, just all the camps that we we're banking on didn't exist because of the road right. closures. Yeah, three and construction, three camp spots. So we had like one camp spot that we wanted and two backups. None of them existed. Sometimes it's just the way she goes. <laughs> and then you end up driving 
in the dark and to random towns to yeah. find random street parking and that's literally that's just where we are. how it is sometimes. <laughs> the early morning clouds were blocking our view of what this town is famous for, emphasizing the surprise factor of what our morning would look like. Just outside of a place called Florian was our first point of interest. We knew about the waterfall, but we had no idea about how to get to it. That is the, that is the craziest looking centipede I've ever seen. Dude. Yo, look at your red legs. <laughs> wow. A little bouncy. Giant rock crocodile. Some places truly elicit particular feelings. For us, this one dropped the projector screen of history to make us feel a part of something ancient. Wondering what types of rituals, ceremonies, or offerings took place here. Well, that's some uh, pretty amazing stuff to see before breakfast. <laughs> Bye Godzilla, thanks for protecting the cave. If you're enjoying this film, please smash that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already. It's free and it really does help us out. As this route crosses two major mountain ranges in the Andes, it's frequented by landslides. And parts of it were even closed for over a year back in 2019. There is major deterioration, construction and unmarked obstacles. The paved highway turns to dirt, which turns to single-tracked, rutted lanes. All while locals transport goods and fulfill their economical activities. The elevation gain and loss through this route is not to be taken lightly. From nearly 3,000 meters in the east, down to almost sea level, and back up again. Many people resist the you blow up another 250 GTO, no big deal. Um, that's what they're there for in the race query. When you're in the pits or kind of the paddock, like you're meant to. These slow, deteriorated parts of the road would start to create some problems for us. But nothing that we couldn't solve. I have a lot of respect for you and the fact that you're constantly pushing your love for vehicles while you're. The cows just keep running down the road and won't let us get past. Oh my god. It's 
crazy peaks out there. Wow. I'd love to fly the drone around those. This section of the route reminds us how foreign tourism in certain parts of Colombia is almost non-existent. Hey, we just came from way up there, camping in the clouds. Came all the way down the valley. Now we're going up the other side. <laughs> We're constantly looking for safe and hopefully scenic places to park for the night. Luckily the sun is still high, but we have a lot of ground to cover. And with an average speed of only 20 kilometers an hour, we might have to ask some locals for help. It's shocking to think that this is a national route. It's a reminder of the resilience and the fortitude of people in this part of the world. Our first exercise in asking for help was with the owner of this piece of land. I'm not sure what he's doing with this gravel parking lot, but it would certainly make a good campsite. It's not lost on us that we're traveling through remote areas of a country that has not always been safe for locals, let alone foreigners. Making it to our next camp before sundown is a must. But with over 200 kilometers to travel and an average speed of only a horse trot, the odds may be against us. The looks on the locals' faces when they see this foreign vehicle driving past their home will never get old. It's first shock and confusion, and then as soon as we wave, their faces light up. No hay mucho viajeros aquí. In North America, waterfalls like this would have their own brochure. This one is just here for those simply driving by. 
one of the many surprises on Route 60. And this still wouldn't be the biggest. Right on the side of the road. It's crazy. Gotta swim in it. We've lucked out and scored a section of pavement. The light is getting low and it doesn't look like we are going to make it to our destination. So we are actively looking for places to camp. These side of the road waterfalls are really not holding anything back. Wow. It's crazy that a road with such natural beauty and tourism potential has us camping on the side of the highway. I think something heard the voices in our heads begging for an awesome camp. It would be one more long drive before that call was answered. It's really pretty here. Stacy was lulled to sleep by horns and engine brakes as I counted the moments until coffee. So it's got like the cre the cream on the yeah. on the cup. It's like a. Oh, it's so good. I thought it was gonna be really creamy by the amount of cream she put on, but it's so refreshing. It tends to be pretty. How do I put this? Pretty active in what countries that brand is. A short detour off Route 60 would take us to a place that came highly recommended. Famous for its massive monolith, it's also quite a tourist hub. A big rock, everyone. <laughs> Follow us for more images of rocks. town of Guatape will make you feel like you're walking through the inside of a Spanish dollhouse. We had to drive pretty far out of town to find some peace and quiet, but it was worth every minute.
This is the type of spot that grounds you. For us, it was two days. And it was exactly what we needed. Some good old-fashioned camping. Okay, the uh, fruit roulette. The fruit roulette side of the street fruit today uh, looks like this. <laughs> the guy said it was like mangostina, so I don't know if that's mangosteen, but it is so tasty. It's so sweet and delicious. It's almost got like a, it's like a lychee and a mango it together. Of lychee, a lot. Yeah. Wow, and it looks like weird little like embryos <laughs> inside this fruit. They're cool though. Wow, so tasty. Continue with La Belleza at Colombia and big news, the country of beauty launching that. Medellin was interesting. We couldn't really pick up exactly what the dynamic of the city was, but we were only there for two days. Found some really nice restaurants, found some really nice beer, just kind of what we're after in general anyway in cities. Cities are always fun, big or small, but our hearts are always in the mountains. Hello, and welcome to our best camp yet. Driving unfamiliar roads has become a daily ritual. What once seemed scary and required preparation has become a force of habit. Our tires roll across new foreign tarmac, dirt, cobblestone, and our hands stick out the windows as we simultaneously listen to the roar of the engine and our favorite podcasts. Sometimes we don't say much. The void is filled with gratitude for where we are and how far we've come. Letting go seems easier. Is that strange? Is it possible to be so comfortable in the unknown that everything feels autopilot? Route 60 gave us a little taste of everything, and we're loving our time in Colombia, and there's still so much more to see as we make our way south to Patagonia. So thank you for being here. I hope by now we've earned your subscription, and we'll see you next time.